I hope everyone's doing good. I am Mr. H. Thank you for joining me. I had a request to present a integral calculus procedure for determining the volume and surface area for a regular right hexagonal prism. We have here a hexagonal prism. Our sides are A, the height is H. You know I've presented a video on how you can determine the area of this. The area has been determined to be 3 root 3 a square over 2 and these are your sides and they are a. If you're looking here at a volume derivation, you're essentially looking at your area integrating from your lower limit to your upper limit. That's what you're doing. Or you can think of it geometrically as this volume is equal to some area, area of the base times the height. What's the base? We're looking here at this literal base right over here. If you were to look at all of that, that would be a and that a would be right over here you'd multiply that with h and you'd have your volume. You can even take a slice out of here and then integrate that slice, area slice from lower limit to upper limit and that's all you have to do. Your lower limit can be zero, your upper limit here can be h. And that would be all there is to it. Volume with respect to x would be zero to h. That right there is my area, three root three a squared over two dx. You can even say zero to h, three root three a square over two dy volume with respect to y it doesn't matter either of these outcomes is the same this right here is a constant you can push it out three root three a square over two zero to h dx x with an h and a zero you have three root three a square over two upper limit lower limit and the difference of the two you're basically having the h multiply with this your end result is three root three a square over two h that right here is your volume formula that's all there is to it three root three a square over two h is the volume of a hexagonal prism right regular hexagonal prism and it's easy the surface area procedure is not very interesting in terms of integral calculus because you're literally forcing and reshaping your integral calculus to give you your desired outcome. There's no magic involved in there. And it's just like a relatively boring of a procedure. Think about it. You have an upper face right here. You have a lower face right here. Each of these faces is that. You're doing three root three a square over two times two and you'll have three root three a square. That's the sum of the faces. Now the only part integral calculus will take is to determine the area of each of these faces which should be all the same. This face has an A and it has a height in terms of dimension. And your area of this face would be easy. You're looking at it from a zero to H. You have a certain function, Y equals A. You can say Y equals A and that's just your function A, a horizontal line DX. But since there's six faces, you can modify your integral to be that. Then you're looking at six A and then zero H DX. All of this can be with regards to DY. You can even say 6, 0, H, A, D, Y. It wouldn't matter either way. And this would be equal to area with respect to Y. The hidden integrand here, as you know, and the antiderivative coming out of it is X from H and 0. Upper limit, lower limit, difference of the two, and you'll get 6, A, H. 6, A, H represents the surface area, the lateral surface area of this prism. 3 root 3, A squared represents the sum of the upper and the lower face areas, surface areas. This right here represents your answer in terms of the surface area. The surface area of a hexagonal prism would be 3 root 3 a squared plus 6 a h or you can isolate 3 a and say a root 3 plus 2 h. Either of these answers is fine and that's your surface area of this. I've given you your volume and I've given you your surface area and that's all there is to this. Have a good day and thank you for watching.